What is going on everybody and welcome back to the collection update series, this time with a little bit of a different look. As some of you may know, I have a huge love for not only magic, but also photography and filmmaking as well. It's something I would really like to explore a little bit more, and as such, I thought this is the perfect series to try and upgrade the look, upgrade the feel, and hopefully have some fun along the way. Now the core of this series has not changed. We are still gonna be adding 12 cards to the binder every single week and hopefully having a blast going through some of the historic pieces, promo pieces, valuable pieces that we get to add to the binder. And we also get to share in that together. I encourage you guys, as always, make sure to share your latest pickups in the comment section below. It gives us a chance to talk about it together, have fun together, and hopefully enjoy the game in a different way other than just the gameplay series. Now, as I said, the core of the series hasn't changed. We've got 12 new cards cards that I want to share with you guys, but again, we're looking at it in a bit of a different way and we're hopefully going to have a blast doing it today. So let's go ahead, let's jump right in. The first card up for today, we have Pure Steel Paladin. Now, Pure Steel Paladin is a really interesting card that spawned a deck almost all on its own. It's called the Cheerios deck in Modern and it is a powerhouse. If you don't know how the deck works, essentially the idea is that you can play equipments and equip them for very, very cheap or free, and along the way you continuously just draw more and more cards, which equals more and more equipments, to hopefully finish off the game with one single swing. Now there are other key cards of course in this deck, but Pure Steel Paladin is really the genesis of where this started and where this strategy really took place. Funny enough, I've never actually picked one of these up before, so this is a brand new card for me, not just for the binder, but my entire collection, and I'm really excited to have it here. Next up, we're moving into blue and we're going all the way back to Urza's block with Morphling. For those of you who don't know, Morphling is a really interesting card. It allows for a lot of different flexible abilities on a single creature, all of which incur some sort of cost, of course, but you can flexibly utilize these abilities to do whatever you might need to do for different situations. This card has actually spanned a whole cycle of cards that span the entire magic history. In fact, some of which have just been printed fairly recently, and they're actually really awesome cards. They're not necessarily the most impactful on any given format, but you do see a lot of these every once in a while poke through and maybe a standard set that really do some work. Not to mention, of course, this is just a wonderful historic piece for the collection. Next up, with a more modern view of blue, we have Temporal Mastery. Now, Temporal Mastery is kind of a fixed version of Time Walk. Technically, it allows you to take an extra turn at sorcery speed, but for a fixed mana cost of seven. However, it still allows you to play it for two mana if you meet the Miracle requirements. Now, Miracle was a mechanic that was introduced in Avacyn Restored. It's a really interesting one that essentially says if it's the first card that you draw on the given turn, you can actually play it for the Miracle cost versus the original mana cost. Obviously, this has spawned a lot of other decks that we see in a lot of eternal formats because of how powerful this mechanic can be and some of the amazing cards that we see including cards like temporal mastery now we're skipping over black but we do go straight to red with an original printing of goblin guide i know we have had goblin guide in the binder before but we have not had the original zendikar version in fact it was an actual promo that we had previously which of course you guys know i'm fond of there's not a ton to say about this card other than how good it is in an aggro deck. A one mana 2-2 two -two with haste, sure it might give your opponent a land, but the ability to deal damage that quickly is exactly what mono red and maybe boros aggro is looking to do, and this really fits in perfectly for that deck. This really is a flagship creature for a lot of modern aggressive style decks, and for good reason. It's a really powerful aggressive card that you want to get down early, get in for as much damage as you can, and hopefully win the game as quickly as as possible. Moving into green, we have one of my all-time favorite cards, Natural Order. This is the original printing of Natural Order featuring the beautiful art from Teresa Nielsen. This card is amazing and it's absolutely a powerhouse in decks like Elves. What it allows you to do is sacrifice a green creature after paying its mana cost to go fetch up another green creature and put it directly onto the battlefield. Now, for cards like Crater Hoof Behemoth, that is a game changer. Literally, this is acting as an extra copy of Crater Hoof in your deck, which allows you to fetch it out as soon as you need to and finish off the game extraordinarily quickly. Especially in a deck like Elves, where you've got so many small, low ground green creatures that you can sacrifice early, this is just the absolute perfect card. Moving on to our next one, we have Nissa Vastwood Seer. 
Now, Nissa Vastwood Seer is part of the Magic Origins collection of Planeswalkers, which tells the origin story of each of these. As such, it allows you to start off as a creature, but then flip into a Planeswalker after meeting certain requirements. While Nissa probably isn't the most powerful in the cycle presented in Magic Origins, it certainly is a really nice card if you're looking to ramp and hopefully get further into your deck to do whatever you might need to do to play the big, crazy green creatures. Not to mention, if you can get that ultimate on that minus 7 side, oh, you can definitely win the game on the spot. Next up, another awesome card from Zendikar, Oracle of Moldiah. Now, speaking of lands, this card gives you all of the utility you need to get extra lands down every single turn. Not only does it allow you to play an additional land on every single turn if you have the capability, it also allows you to look at the top of your deck and if it's a land, play it from the top. This is a wonderful addition to the cube because it allows for so many awesome extra plays that are normally not possible. There are also cards that work very well with this in tandem that allow you to play other cards off the top of your deck, maybe a creature, and in that case you start to be able to play almost every single card off of the top of your deck, which in general cases will win you the game. All in all, I'm really happy to have the original version of this card added to the collection. I actually do already have one of these, but this is a stunning card and one of those that I would love to get a full playset of. Next up guys, we have got our one and only promo and a bit of an odd card, Scragnoth. For those of you who don't know what this card is, I will go ahead and explain. It is a 3-4 for 4 in a green, it can't be countered, and it has protection from blue. A pretty straightforward card of course, but really this was more of a value add. I love these old school promos, it has that old school card frame, it also has that beautiful star foil on the actual card frame itself which I love. The art for this card is absolutely ridiculous, it's a very odd piece of artwork, but it, it really is a cool card, and again it's, a, it's another part of Magic's history that I love adding to the binder, not a card that I've had before but a little bit obscure and I think just a really fun piece. Moving into artifacts, we have one of my all-time favorite big bombs for cube, which is Sundering Titan. For those of you who don't know, this big 710 creature from Darksteel does a lot in a cube format. When it comes into play or leaves play, it actually blows up one of every land type on the field, which does include your own, however, assuming you have played very well, you should be able to manage that loss. Basically what you do is pick a land of each type, so one island on the field, one forest on the field, and so on, and immediately blow it up as soon as it enters play, or again, leaves play. That's a really powerful ability in a format where, of course, every land really matters and you are trying to do big, broken things. This certainly qualifies, especially in a deck like Reanimator or something along those lines, where you can really lock out an opponent immediately from the game. Not to mention, while it is fairly easy to just remove, it still is a big 7-10 and if you can get it down early, naturally the opponent is going to struggle against that. Moving into multicolored cards, we have our first one which is Barktooth Warbeard. While this card isn't necessarily the most exciting in the world, featuring no abilities and really just being a 6-5 legend, it does have the coolest name potentially in the entirety of the game. I also really love these old school legends, as you guys know we've added a handful of these to the binder, and while they're not necessarily huge value adds for any reason, it is j again just a really nice piece of Magic's history that I love to look back on every once in a while. I didn't play during the time of Legends, however, this really is kind of the genesis of a lot of things that we see nowadays, including things like multicolor cards, which I think is a really nice value add even just for the historical relevance. Next up we have Sire of Insanity. While this really isn't a card I plan to add to cube or a deck or anything like that, it really is a beautiful piece from the secret layer drops. I know the secret layers generally get a bad rep and I kind of understand it to be honest, they're not my favorite thing, but I really love the artwork here and so I knew when it came up I had to pick it up. The artwork here really does stand out, it's so menacing, so intimidating, and I think that truly really does represent a sire of insanity. It's a beautiful, connective piece between not only the name, but then that artwork as well. Finally, our very last card is a land, and it is an original version of Wasteland. Now, Wasteland, if you don't know, is a card that sees a lot of play in older Eternal formats. The reason being is that you actually can use it to destroy other lands, which is a really big thing when you are resource denying an opponent, and a lot of those original formats are very focused on resource denial. Not to mention with a larger card pool, a lot of land tech gets added to those decks, and so to be able to just blow up that tech right away for free essentially is a really big flex. I do love the original art of this card, there have been a couple newer versions of course, but the original always holds a special place in my heart, and so for me it's a really exciting piece to add to the collection. 
Guys, I want to thank you so much for hopefully watching and enjoying this series. This has been an absolute blast to be able to bring you 12 cards every single week and hopefully continuously make improvements on the series as we go. As always, I plan to have the value of the binder as well as the percentage complete, which we did just cross over 50% on the screen for you guys so you can track it along with me. Again, everybody, please feel free to share your collection pickups in the comment section below. I think this is a really great opportunity and a really great forum for us to be able to share in that together. Together. It gets us away from the gameplay a little bit, I know, but it hopefully pushes us in a direction that you guys can feel comfortable chatting and just having a blast about some of the awesome cards that you've been picking up. I really appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.